Hey everybody, welcome to Around the Twist, episode 354. It is January 13th, 2019. I have been very remiss in posting, so sorry, but <laughs> the whole begin as you mean to go on thing, I get the feeling 2019 is going to be very disorganized, very disjointed for me, because that's how this year has started, and it's just... I'm not looking forward to it being that way, but <laughs> I just get that feeling that that's how it's going to be. First two weeks have kind of been a little bit of chaos, a little bit of, <laughs> uh, we'll leave it at that noise because that's about how it feels. I can't even describe it. Uh, sadly, there hasn't been, oh, there's been a little bit of like every kind of crafting that I do, but not a whole lot of any one thing. So we're going to jump right in again to go with the theme of my disorganized life. Uh, I didn't write show notes. I hear my daughter jumping on her bed and not taking a nap. I've had to pull her hamper, like her laundry hamper, her dirty clothes hamper out of her room during nap time because she's taken to, for some reason, standing in it. Like she doesn't take the dirty clothes out, she stands on top of them like she's trying to shove them down, but she's just standing there. <laughs> and then she'll fall over in the hamper. I don't know. Anyway, moving on. It's a knitting podcast, right? Crafting podcast, that little thing that we do, stuff we do with our hands, right? Uh, first thing, what I have, oh my goodness, on the nails. I'm going to be relying on my Ravelry page, so apologize. Uh, first thing, we're going to go oldest first, right? The thing I've been working on the longest. Well, that just happens to be something you haven't seen since August of 2016. Yes, I have gone back to the snowflakes. I don't know what made me do it. I think it was doing the one snowflake for my secret Santa at work this year, just the bug bit me again that, ooh, I should work on those. How long ago were those? Oh my gosh, three years ago now. Well, two and a half. Two and a half I finished them. It was 2016 when I decided I wanted to crochet my way through this. And I did 12. I gave up on number 13 because it wasn't by... So, all these patterns, sorry. We'll start over. 99 Snowflakes. I stole this book from my mom's pattern stash years ago. Uh, with her stole slash was given, she gave me permission, so, or handed it to me and said, here, take this. It's done by Leisure Arts. It's kind of a compilation of different crocheted snowflakes. It's falling apart because I'm using it, so I've used it so much. But all the little patterns have little pictures which is lovely because otherwise I wouldn't know what the heck they were supposed to look like because they kind of look like little scrappy nastiness. It's like, oh, how am I supposed to pin that out when I starch it? Well, I kind of stalled out because number 13, this one here. The first 12 patterns were by a woman named Helen Milinkovich Milton. Love her. Love the way she writes crochet patterns. This uh, 13th one was by Faye Shelton, and let me tell you, two and a half years ago, I did not have the skills for the way Miss Faye Shelton writes her patterns, so I'm going to go back and try to do number 13. In the interim, sometime in August of 2016, according to my Ravelry page, I had started uh, Snowflake number 14 from the book. Uh, <laughs> well, today, I built my daughter a fort. I built Tara a fort. It's all over here. You want to see my messy basement? Here we go. That is the gloriousness that is the fort that has about 18 blankets and there's about 15 pillows inside. And she and Gabe love it, so we're working on it. So August 2016, I did one of these snowflakes. <laughs> and they're inside the little bag. I have them all labeled so I know which one goes with which picture in the book when I go to finally starch these. And these are some of the smaller ones. Uh, they're supposed to be about an inch and three quarters across. I think mine are slightly smaller than that. Uh, I'm using 
for all of these, I'm using JP and Coates Knit Crochet in the Ecru colorway. I'm still on the first ball of it. Here it is, right here. I know it looks white on your monitors. Trust me, it's off white. It's Ecru. And then I'm using what was my gra my Grandma Sween's one of her steel crochet hooks. This itty bitty little thing. It's a Susan Bates. It's what was available. And it is a seven, which I had to look up eons ago. And a seven is a 1.65 millimeter crochet hook, steel crochet hook. So I'm starting in on those again. Snowflake 14 is done. Now I'm gonna go back and do number 13. I did, uh, someone asked over on YouTube and I can't remember who it was. Yes, I did find all the snowflakes. They were in another, so I've got two of these bags. One that was made for me by the lovely Amy that has the exploding TARDIS on it, Amy. Of the, oh God, Knitting in Circles? Were Amy and Darren Knitting in Circles? I'm terrible. Their um, video cast is no longer recording, but they're wonderful, wonderful people. Amy had sewed this for me, so that's where the active stuff is, what I'm working on. And then I think probably the same pattern, at least, was... Um, Natasha Tashbalaz down in Australia made me this and gave it to me the last time that I went to uh, SSK. And so this is where the finished ones are living. And this one was all wadded up and had all of them. So this is the 13 that I have finished. They're all here. Everyone is present and correct and accounted for. So I'll just keep plugging away at that. It's going to be the never-ending project. I'm sure I'll have another two-and-a-half-year hiatus. Good lands. How did I let it go that long? Why did none of you remind me of the cro of the snowflakes before now? Anyway, 99 snowflakes. I'm starting again. So you'll see more of those coming up. It was nice to have a quick little project while Tara was playing in the fort. I was able to knock out two of them. So those were finished. <laughs> the sets of three. So those of you who haven't been around that long, the plan in my head when I started in January of 2016, yeah, was to crochet my way through this book, do three of each one. So whatever 99 times three is, that's over 300. It's like 317, check my math. Uh, <laughs> Nope, 297 snowflakes is what I'm planning on doing, total. Why am I doing this insanity, you may ask? Because, I, I guess I, I never had to worry about this growing up because I was an only child. So when I moved out of the house, my mom was like, hey, you want Christmas ornaments? Take all of them from your childhood. And she could finally do her themed Christmas tree that she'd always wanted to do rather than the mishmash of ornaments that we did every year. Um, it included all the old craft, like preschool craft ones that I did, and um, every year they'd let me go up to the Hallmark store and pick out a new ornament, so um, it was just this mishmash of ornaments. Well, I've decided I want to do something, I mean, still have the special memory ones, but my husband doesn't have any of those. It, like, no ornaments from his childhood, really, or nothing that he can say is his, so I feel kind of bad putting all my childhood ornaments on the tree, so... What I'm wanting to do is decorate our tree with knit and crocheted snowflakes. It's just a winter theme. Like, like this year we had um, these gold and silver glitter ball ornaments that I've had for years and years and years, just as filler. Um, we had those, we had candy canes that the kids went nuts for, their preschool ornaments that they've made the last few years. And then, um, ones that have special significance to us as a family. So like one that we got uh, when we were in Maui on our honeymoon, ones that have been given to us, the bride and, little knitted bride and groom cake toppers from our wedding that I made. Things like that uh, are on the tree as well, up high where small fingers can't reach. And uh, eventually I'll have a tree of my own to put all my Gone with the Wind porcelain ornaments on again. But that's neither here nor there. So I thought this would be nice, but then I'm going, oh my gosh, we have two kids. What are we gonna do when they move out of the house? So the plan was to do three. So I'll have three full sets, 
one will be used on our tree all through their formative growing up years so they'll have memories of these snowflakes and then when they move out on their own get a tree of their own like oh my gosh I don't have any ornaments I can go here mommy made a full set for you when you were still little and I've kept them all these years just to give to you now so hopefully it'll be a good memory either that or um, it's just me being obsessive about something which is entirely possible as well so that's one thing I crocheted two snowflakes this morning, if I'm being totally honest. First thing, 10 minutes in, yay! Let's get a wiggle on. Uh, second thing that we're working on, what's the next oldest thing, is the blanket. My stained glass blanket, take two. So I did manage to finish all of, like, I did one a day in September, join, September. December, wow! I managed to join one center a day all through December. To square off the other side, I have um, one, two, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more to do. So since the last time you saw me a couple weeks ago, I did two. There's my little progress keeper from Melia Bella. So we added Lucy, which is named after Wendy Knits, her um, Wendy Johnson, her old Seal Point rag doll kitty that she used to have. Her name was Lucy. This was a colorway inspired by her. And I think, think, this one, which looks terrible with the color, there we go, is Sugar Plums, if I remember right, which the kids picked it out, and it's right next to Firecracker, and they're both very similar, and I'm like, ooh. Okay, you can tell which one's Tara picked, because it's pinks next to pinks. That's okay, Gay Bat always picks the green ones out, so eh, I try to mix it up. So we joined two more on, and I haven't touched it. It's just been sitting on the back of the couch. It's like, yeah, blah. Haven't wanted to. I don't know why. I probably burned out on working on it, doing one a day in December. But I'll get back to it, and I'll finish it, and this will be the first half of the blanket done. Yay. So this... <laughs> is the Juggling Hexes pattern by Wendy Harbaugh. It is a free pattern. I'm crocheting this up using an F hook, which is a 3.5 millimeter hook, if I remember right. 3.75, excuse me. 3.75 millimeter hook. And the black around the edges. The centers is all um, leftovers from Socks That Rock, lightweight and medium weight I've been using. And the black edges are the Loopy U Solid Series in black, which has since been reformulated. Hi, okay, third thing. <laughs> this has gotten the most work on it, is the Manly Socks for Hubby, which I think is the second set of socks for him that I've called Manly Socks. It's my basic 64 stitch, 64 stitch vanilla socks. I am doing them out of socks that rock lightweight in the Strange Brew colorway which is probably just going to look dark to you guys. Oh, not really. Okay, good. You can see it's blowing it out from the monitor, but uh, blues and browns, there's a teeny bit of teal in it. He can see pretty much every color in this, which I love. First sock has been done. Top down, 64 stitches with a gusset I, last time. Haha, I put a progress marker in. I just had the toe to go. Toe is done. First sock finished. Second sock is all right another one that I worked on a lot this well not a lot but you know last night this morning second sock cuff done heel flap heel turn done I have picked up one side of the heel flap for the gusset I'm currently needing to pick up the other uh, working on this on a US one and a half which is a 2.5 millimeter needle I found that works for me for the size that the yarn is, and I've had to adapt that over the years. <laughs> I used to knit up socks that rock lightweight on a one. I couldn't do that now, they'd be bulletproof practically, but I'm excited. He almost has another pair of socks, which he's excited about, because I didn't realize I had knit him so few socks over the years, and I really need to get going on that. But I did, oh, and I didn't bring those down. So, I stopped at Loopy U the other day, because I happened to be doing a visit and I was done for the day. 
a visit for my job. I was done seeing people for the day and off the clock and went into Loopy U and just looked around. It had been a while since I'd been in there in their new shop. And of course I went straight for the socks that rock wall. I, or I should say I circled, I looked at everything, and then I circled back. And I did get three skeins from the Loopy U of lightweight socks that rock and not like I need more. I still have a whole shelf full. What am I doing? But there you go. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Bad Karen, no cookie. But that's everything I have on my needles. I haven't done anything further on my next scrub top. It's still sitting in there back in that door. It's cut out. That's all I have. It's cut out. The only other thing I have for pokey things, I did start on my uh, In This House We Do Geek cross stitch by Fangirl Stitches. It had a couple of false starts. So I did purchase Even Weave from which I've never stitched on before. But that they had it at Joann's and that's what the pattern calls for. I believe I got 25 what did I get? 28 count even weave. Cross stitch in mushroom, which is this kind of tan ish color, which works with all the. Um, it works with all the colors. But <laughs> let's just say Karen's not used to working on even weave. I've never done it before. I know I've read about it. I, did, I completely spaced that for even weave, you're not supposed to just go like on your X's, you're not supposed to go just over one square, you're supposed to go over two. Like, okay, let me show you. Hey, I've got this pulled up on my phone because I had to look it up because I was like, that's not right. This is going to be tiny. So, this is from the cross stitch. Tara, lay down. Go to bed. Gabe, go to bed, please. I don't even get nap time anymore. Oh my god. They're talking to me through the heating register. Okay, anyway, this is on the crossstitchguild.com. So, stitching on even weave. They've got this lovely little thing. So you can see you go over two holes rather than just one like you would do on Aida, right? Right. I wasn't doing that. So I had counted everything out like I would be stitching on Aida. And I started on the edge, which you'll be able to see over here, and I had to pick it all out. See that, that dark line right there? Yeah, that's where I stitched and had to rip. So instead, I went and I found the center of my fabric. Can you see where the blue is? Right above the M in Ming. See it? That I've marked the center of my fabric. It is disappearing ink. I will be able to wash that out. And I started doing all the back stitching. So the M of have fun storming the castle was right underneath the center, so that's where I started. So that's what I have, Ming the Castle. <laughs> Ming the Castle, that's the way my life is going right now, just Ming the Castle. I don't know. Anyway, that's all that I've done. I did also manage to crack one of this top one on my Q-snap putting it on so it no longer holds tight. I just, mmm, this year, I tell ya, it's already not starting off great. It's gonna turn around, right? Right? Reassure me. Um, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I told you about that. Wow, I was like, I didn't tell you anything about the socks for hubby besides how far I got. Yes, I did. I told you the yarn. I told you the needle. I told you how many stitches. Wow. Okay, I give up. <laughs> oh dear. There are things going on at the job. That I, this, moving on to various and sundry, by the way. There are things going on with the job. 
good things. Good things. Nothing bad. Um, there are things going on in life. Hopefully a good thing that I'll be able to tell you about and show you next week. If I record next week, we might be on the road. We might have an impromptu road trip. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to tell you right now. Cause let me put it this way. Let me move closer here. I'm going to let you guys in on this because the kids don't know. We're getting a puppy. <laughs> it's been nine months, almost nine months since we lost Phoebe. I still get teary. I'm tearing up right now. But we've also puppy sat for uh, one of the doctors that I work with. And I've realized we need a second dog. So, also, uh, my parents lost their poodle in December, and my mom started looking for another dog. So, the place that they were looking had other puppies that were also available shortly. And she went and got hers. She got a little Lhasa Apso, whose name is Lucy. And while she was there, I had her look at a dog for me. And I kind of looked at the website, and I was like, you know what, I don't, they had Bichons, and I'm like, I don't want another Bichon. And I wasn't crazy about the look of the poodles that they had. I mean, we want a non-shedding dog. So, this. Oh, we're getting glare like crazy. Hang on, let me shut off the monitor. There we go, that helps. This is, is our little one that we will hopefully be getting next weekend. But, shh, the kids don't. Because as soon as I tell them we're getting one, it will be nothing like, are we going to get the puppy today? Are we going to get the puppy today? When are we going to go get the puppy? So, but we're getting a puppy next weekend. <laughs> I'm so excited. I really am. Um, so, yeah. How's that for very and Sundry? Y'all are in on a family secret. I might have gotten this dog without asking my husband first. I might have asked him and then went, you know what, you still have your dog. I don't have my dog. I'm getting one. <laughs> so, puppy is coming. Uh, so let's do a question out of the uh, anything, out of the any questions thread. Thank you everyone who's been asking things to, so this can keep going because I love answering these. Um, let's do one from Mimi Knits, Meme Knits 729 who is Melissa. She said, hi, Karen. I love how you knit socks all the time. I noticed you only knit plain socks lately, but I've mentioned you knit you knitting monkey socks. Is there a reason why you only knit plain socks rather than having a pattern in them? Do you have any favorite pattern socks you can suggest? Thanks for the great podcast and sharing not only your name, but allowing us to be part of your family life too, Melissa. So, um, uh, reason why I only knit plain socks rather than having a pattern in them. Mainly, and this is the main reason, uh, I've been knitting, like, usually it's kind of a fly out the door and I don't have knitting with me, or I don't have, or I'm going somewhere where I don't, I can't look at a pattern, or it would be rude to have a pattern out on my phone or something, but if I have a plain sock, I know I can just sit there and knit, and not have to look at what I'm doing, and still be engaged in the conversation, engaged in everything. Um, any favorite pattern socks I can suggest? Obvi obviously the monkey socks. I've knit probably a dozen pairs of them over the years. I enjoy knitting the zigzagulars. Those are good as well. Um, what else? Let me see. Hang on. I'll pull it up. New tab. What else have I knit over the years? I'm sure y'all are yelling at me. Just plain ribbed socks for the kids I've done as well. Um, the thing I love about plain knitting is something I noticed I was putting all that effort into a pattern on some beautiful hand, using beautiful hand painted yarn. And the, either the pattern was, pattern was getting lost or the colors of the yarn were muddying everything and it's like no I want to let this beautiful yarn shine through and they're just going in my shoes anyway so it doesn't matter if I do a pattern or not people are still really impressed if pulling out a plain self-striping sock as they are pulling out some highly patterned complex 
thing. And right now, too, the part of the reason I changed between my family life and my brain space right now, I just don't have the bandwidth to do a highly patterned sock. I couldn't do a cookie A sock right now. I could if I tried. It would probably take me a year and a half to do a pair of socks because I'd knit like a row a night and that would be it. So let's see, pattern socks, pattern socks. Zigzagulars, like I said. Um, what else? Going back, what else have I knit? I really liked the Breaking Hearts pattern by Turtle Pearl. Turtle Girl? Turtle Pearl Girl? Let me look. By Christy H. Payne. <laughs> Uh, the Breaking Hearts socks, I enjoyed those. Those work really well with hand-painted yarns as well. Um, going on. There's all the co there's when I was in the cookie A phase. Um, I really liked Hermione's Everyday Socks as well. That's another one that I could do without a, uh, without a pattern. And once you look at the pattern, you're like, oh, duh, I can figure that out. Um, but it's another one that's just a little more in-depth than what I want to do right now. I mean, it's a knit one, knit three pearl one, alternating-ish. It's a free pattern, I'm not giving away the secret sauce. Uh, I enjoyed, I did a few pairs of the Holidays pattern by Ann Hansen. That was a release through the Rock and Sock Club. One of the years I was in it. Go back. This is going to be a long show, guys. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm trying to aspirate my coffee today instead. Um, I know a lot of people enjoyed the Laburn socks. I didn't really care for them. The one pair that I made, they seemed fiddly to me, and I didn't like it at the time. There's my monkey phase. I did. Let's see. At least, minimum. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What about these ones? I can't sit tell. I didn't put with the pattern was on those. It's not, though. At least nine pairs of monkey socks at some point or another. So, that's been recorded on Ravelry, we'll say that. So, that would be Tara jumping off of her bed. Not napping. Can you see the twitch? Actually, it's this eye. Right down there. And I know coffee doesn't help. Coffee only makes the twitch worse, but without coffee, I would cease to function. So, I'd say, yeah. I like simple, I like classic. Uh, Jay Walkers were huge for a while, but unless you can figure out what you have to do to make it so the pattern doesn't suck in enough that you can't pull them over your heel. It's kind of dicey there, but it looks beautiful. Um, so, Zigzagulars, Hermione's Everyday Socks, Laburn, um, Monkey Socks, Breaking Hearts. Those are my favorites right now of the pattern socks. It's once they have enough pattern to keep you interested, but not so much that you have to be like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, like face deep in the pattern. You can't do them at the movie theater, really. So another reason to <laughs> knit plain socks. Um, let's do one more. I'm looking. ACP and Dillback, I'll get back to yours because those I have to do a little research on. Uh, woolly Mittens, let's do yours quickly. And this is Heather from Kansas. Um, I know time is at a premium. Yes, yes it is. But when you have time, what are your favorite crafting podcasts to watch slash listen to? I'll be honest, I don't do that at all. I don't listen or watch a whole lot of knitting podcasts. I just, I don't have the time. 
I'm finding I have more time now with the new job. So I'm in the car a lot, driving from participant to participant, different people's homes. Uh, so I've actually, the main knitting podcast that I've, audio podcast that I've listened to has been the Knit More Girls over the years, uh, Jasmine and Gigi. And I'm actually all caught up on their show. So I'm looking for suggestions for audio podcasts. I'd like to try a few more. All the ones I used to listen to are now all, they're all gone. Uh, and I need something. Uh, to watch, honestly, I don't have time to sit in front of the thing. Most people's shows are, well, like this one's pushing half an hour. That's about the limit of what I like to do, because I know your guys' time is precious as well. Um, thank you to those of you who do watch. I started this morning trying to get back into watching shows. Um, started with the most recent episode of The Fat Squirrel Speaks, Amy Beth. I might need to go back a ways to get more into it because I was just kind of zoning in and out while monitoring children not killing each other, right? And yeah, that's all I've got right now. I used to watch The Knit Girls, Laura and Leslie. Um, used to watch um, Steve. Steve and Callie, which Callie moved away. Dramatic Knits. I used to watch that. Um, I don't know if any of these people are still podcasting. That's how long it's been since I watched a podcast. I just, I, oh gosh, I just, I don't have the time in my life right now to just sit and plus catch up on TV, plus catch up on movies, plus, 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 plus. Um, in the evenings, I probably could but I'm usually watching hubby play his video game so we can spend some time together. So not really doing a whole lot there. And you know what? In for a penny, in for a pound. Let's do one more. Worcester weight, Tara. Ah, lovely Tara. Um, hello, lovey. Coffee cups, what is your ideal cup size? Bucket. Bucket. At least. I mean, this is, what, two-thirds of my head? roughly. <laughs> so standard size coffee cup, cup of coffee for me. So I still make my coffee using the Keurig, um, using a reusable filter and the San Marco coffee. This is, I think, peach apricot. It tastes like peach apricot. Whatever it is, it's delicious. Um, this so on the Keurig, you have the three buttons for the three different sizes of brewing that you can do. And I always brew the largest one and the smallest one. And the cup has to be able to hold that plus have room for a little bit of milk because I'm impatient and I don't want to wait for my coffee to cool enough to drink. Because by the time I remember to sit it down somewhere, let it cool, remember to drink it, it's usually stone cold. So I want enough milk to take the chill off, which in this cup is about a quarter of an inch. And then I start drinking it right away so I can still get it while it into me while it's warm. 